All right, man. So obviously times have been tough for Desmond, but don't worry. He's going to make a full recovery as long as he stays on this machine. Passa virada. Ah, não nego. É nego. I mean, I have, I've got a portable charger, if that works here. No! Yo guys, it is your boy Niren here, and you are watching FTW. This is of course the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. And this episode marks five years since the series began. Christ, I'm old. Absolutely ridiculous stuff to imagine that this has been going for half a decade and that we've been waffling for this long. But I want to say a massive thank you to all of you for letting this series become what it is for this period of time. We'll bring back a classic segment for later on to celebrate. What's been kicking off in the world this week? What are troublesome times for those attempting to use social media this week as there was a big outage at Meta, meaning no Facebook or Instagram. Fuck's sake, I can't even post about him hitting the stairs. Now does it seem like a good time for that man? It left most people heading back to their ex and not for the first time. Content creators were realizing they've actually got to go outside this week or go downstairs to speak to a brother for the first time in three weeks. There was a young lad and he looked awful similar to me. Do I know you from somewhere? And he goes, do I know you? And we just hugged it out. Turns out that no relation at all, and I just headbutted him and he got taken away. Meanwhile, to be honest, it was down for a while and they needed assistance, clearly. They could have just asked Burnley fans how to deal with going down. And one team joining them in the championship will undoubtedly be Sheffield United, who were once again slapped in the Premier League. This time losing 6-0 at home to title challengers Arsenal, and it's their worst loss since their last loss. Five goals conceded in four home games in a row. That's one of them stats and records they didn't even know they had to keep. But at least during that period, they've scored two goals, am I right? Every cloud. You're still thinking about the bad news, aren't you? On the flip side though, and Arsenal continue to flatten everybody. That's a 6-0, 5-0 and 6-0 away. Gunners fans back in the day were dreaming of times like this. They've gone from defending Andre Santos and Lauren Koscielny at school, watching Marouane Shamak put six tubs of hair gel on his forehead again, to this. Imagine if the old players were here now. Emmanuel Abue trying to understand the Sheffield accent from down on the touchline. Assistance was eating a sandwich at the time. I thought that was a complete lack of respect. David Luiz's ADHD kicking in as he Batista bombs Tom Davies. Mikel Arteta seeing Sebastian Scalacci concede a 14th goal from an error in three weeks. It's a disgrace. That's what it is. The goals were flying in here and Eddie and Ketia wanted to get involved talking to Mikel Arteta down on the touchline. <laughs> Come here. I'm ready now. Because honestly, Sheffield United might as well have quit here. It was 5-0 at half time and five minutes of injury time at the end. Fam, just let them go home. One Sheffield United fan had plenty of notifications set up for their loss against Wolves. His phone must have been burning up with the amount of goal notifications pinging here and it really does beg the question 0708 derby or this sheffield united squad just enjoy them yeah. man we're lucky very to different they made a substitute 16 minutes in guys it's galas and i think their players have had enough as well throw it in the towel the first time they see bukayo saka take on his man 1v1 oh I, yeah it doesn't matter i give up well played guys i'll be honest again if i'm a blades player yeah just pretend you don't play football so darling tell me how's the football going football yeah yeah, nah, I actually ain't played in three years. I give it up. But what do you mean? Yeah, I'm a butcher now. Yeah, yeah, bacon and that. Don't actually play. You said you play for the blades. Nah, use a blade on, get me in the butcher. Do you understand how bad things are for your football club when even the blind have seen enough? Yes, Everybody was heading for the exit doors here. And I can only imagine they'll have been giving their tickets away, leaving after the first 45 minutes. Here you go, mate. Go and see the second half. It's shit. It's nice to see Arsenal celebrate by showing how many goals they wanted to score in this game. But in the end, the scoreline could be shown by Norwich fans on one hand. They were making us dream of double figures. We thought it was going to be 10 after the first half. Then the second half was, was horrendous. But either way, the Gunners have now scored 30 goals since January. To put it into perspective, Manchester United have scored 37 all year. Leave us alone! <laughs> Man City are keeping up the pressure too though after a simple win in the Manchester derby. They beat United 3-1 here at the Etihad, but it wasn't always plain sailing as Marcus Rashford scored a screamer. <laughs> Now before this one, and I can't lie, I was looking a little bit different in the living room. Liverpool fans needed a United win. And United's tactics going into this game against Man City, pretty predictable. I'll tell you what, yeah, as a Liverpool fan, I've always rated Andre Anana, you know. The guy was making save after save in the first half. Not getting much assistance from his back four, though. But unfortunately, he couldn't hold on forever. As Phil Foden scored the game's second banger. He'd score again with Haaland then grabbing the final goal. Erling himself missed a sitter beforehand and his highlights up to this goal were pretty poor. He 
turned up when the job had already done. The guy's a fraud. You're not a builder, bro. You're a built. The house is done. It didn't stop things getting sensual, though, with Phil Foden kissing his forehead. He's not been this passionate about a journey anywhere since the trip to Iceland. The guy in the back, though, not impressed. Why are you gay? What I am impressed about, though, Sofian Amrabat managing to get a 4.0 rating in nine minutes. This guy honks. The guy was offering absolutely nothing to Manchester United upon coming on and had some stern words for Christian Eriksen in midfield. I had a heart attack. Get the fuck up. The hospital later. Have a drink. Cigarette. Cup of coffee. Poor Johnny Evans, man. He went to Manchester United as a gym membership. The guy just wanted to keep fit over the summer and now he's playing against Erling Haaland. The Norwegian was riling up the Man City fans doing a portion out on the pitch. And honestly, you know, I might have said that it started badly for Man City, but they deserve the win here. Their shot counter was higher than Manchester United's possession. United fans have not given up on Ten Hag yet, saying that Rome wasn't built in a day. Rome would be looking a whole lot different if it was built by Eric Ten Hag, though. But on top of the table, still Liverpool. Just hold off on this one for a second, lads. It's okay. How proceedingly premature. Darwin Nunez scored a 99th minute winner that saw Jurgen Klopp's side defeat Nottingham Forest here. Everything in this guy's life is chaotic. I don't know how he makes it through the day. Brother, you were making a sandwich. You don't even need the oven. How have you got a fire? Now, late into the day here, and Nottingham Forest fans were singing that Darwin Nunez was just a shit Andy Carroll. Things backfired, though, and Liverpool fans ended up claiming the chant. Virgil van Dijk stole someone's phone during the celebrations. <laughs> Honestly, I've come to the conclusion, Liverpool, we just like the attention at this point. We turn into a completely different team when it's the 184th minute of the match. Oh! We might as well call it cloppage time at this point. Injury time represented because all of our players are out injured. Although, I, I can't lie, things got a little bit too far when Jurgen Klopp was prepping our next substitute. Guys, the average age of the squad's about 14 at this point. The game's over by five, and it's still past the bedtime of half of our bench. But not everybody was happy here, as Nottingham Forest's chairman chased the referee down the tunnel after being unhappy with decisions made, and I'm guessing the amount of additional time. And for that referee, like 90% of Nottingham's residents, he had to get out of Nottingham ASAP. Now, let's head over to Spain for a second because there was unprecedented stuff in La Liga. With Valencia and Real Madrid drawing 2-2 going into the final minute, a ball is swung into the box for Jude Bellingham to be the hero again. <laughs> Except the referee had blown for full time with mm, the ball still in the air. This is corruption. This is a theft. I knew this official was familiar. Unsurprisingly, Real Madrid players and coaches were stunned and appalled alike. Carlo called it completely unprecedented, basically saying an investigation's got to be conducted into this one. Danny Carvajal was telling everybody to sack it off immediately. And things were already ridiculous before this even happened. Real Madrid were having to wear last year's away kit because all of their 2024 kits clashed with Valencia's. Imagine the poor kit man trying to delve through the garage finding last year's stuff. This is this actually a crazy situation. How can you blow for full time there. The referees just edged them all for no reason. You know, I'm starting to think actually that just referees around the globe, maybe they're all outright incompetent. Jude was really having to hold his anger in to avoid assaulting the ref here. But either way, swore at him and now has got a two game ban, having been sent off after the final whistle. Both Vinny Jr. and Aurelian Shuameni couldn't believe it on Twitter. Meanwhile, in my opinion, it might just be the referees preparing for next year. They gotta keep things even somehow, as Kylian Mbappe runs clean through to make it 8 0, and the referee calls a water break. Celebrating when Real Zaragoza score a consolation goal after Mbappe's seven goal all. But while all that was going on, there was a horrific injury for Valencia centre-back Mukhtar Diakabi. The Frenchman planting his foot down on the ground was fallen on by a Real Madrid player and I'm, I'm honestly, I'm glad that you can't see it from the reverse angle because it's one of the most horrific things I've ever seen. Thankfully, he posted about his recovery on social media and was seen back at Valencia's training ground on crutches. I imagine he'll be out for quite some time, but either way, get well soon Mukhtar and hopefully we'll see you back on the pitch as soon as possible. Now on the European stage and Real Madrid sneaks through into the Champions League final eight. They may have been unlucky domestically, but they got a slice of fortune with the referees here after Vinny Jr. grabbed Willy Orban's throat. There was no red card there, but it was red mist descending between Luis Appenda and Danny Carvajal. Appenda saying that he would fuck Danny Carvajal's mother. Honestly, Luis, you'd probably try and then miss. Because honestly, him in front of goal was a disaster class in this match. RB Leipzig had 13 shots on target across both legs to Real 6, but unfortunately gave the ball wings and slapped it over the bar repeatedly. Meanwhile, it's fair to say Jude Bellingham wasn't expecting his female reporter to ask him to come home with her. Gracias, lo <laughs>
Elsewhere in Bayern Munich and Lazio's clash ended in the German side saving their season with a second leg comeback. Before the game though and Lazio fans decided to go to a bar that's synonymous with a certain man from German history that I cannot name on this channel and uh, supporting his ideologies let's say. El Fascismo was really ramping up here. Genuine fuck Lazio fans honestly from the bottom of my heart. Batai's Delict scored a banger here from a corner with so much force that it sent the referee falling to the ground. Whoever edited the Wikipedia page was far too quick with it. Manuel Neuer meanwhile was distracted becoming an attacking midfielder halfway through the game and at full time upon being interviewed by CBS and talking about the fact that he'd go home and watch games on Sky Go, Mika Richards was suspicious of Harry Kane's fire stick. Uh, Thierry, I appreciate the, the kind words yesterday or the day before. Where I was the, what was the, what was that on Harry? What show was that? That was Monday Night Football, yeah. 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 Video, video <laughs> How do you get Thank that you. in Germany, by the way? Ah, uh, don't worry, don't worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a dodgy box. Listen, if the German authorities find out about this one, he's arrested. And the handcuffs will be the first silverware he's touched in his career. Get me arrested! You, you, open you. the door! Harold is gonna be left devastated when he joins Prison FC, only to lose their in jail league to the under 23 squad when he joins. And at Real Sociedad, they were unfortunately knocked out by PSG. The defeat against the League on Champions wasn't gonna stop Sociedad fans from celebrating their progress to the knockout stages in some fashion. Well, amongst the fans that actually made it into the game, as many PSG and Sociedad fans didn't make it to the ground after having weapons confiscated beforehand. That is a whole entire toolkit, mate. What is going on there? Man City East passed a spirited Copenhagen with a wolf on a second leg win. The maddest thing about this one, though, was an injury. Look away now, if you like, because Mateus Nunes dislocated his finger. I don't need to see it. Get this injury out of my face, mate. Someone said inverted winger to inverted finger. Now you're taking the piss. His own hand is cutting inside, mate. On the topic of Manchester City, though, and there's the announcement that a new Netflix documentary will be be following them from their treble winners campaign. The 115 charges though leave them in the true crime section and Kyle Walker's episode is not PG. Yeah so basically I was just bare shagging and that and then Pep Guardiola was interviewed at the start of the program about their FFP situation. The real question is this, was all this legal? Absolutely fucking not. Meanwhile Man City officials will be left concerned realizing that the financial team were interviewed as well. All I'm saying is I hope that this show hasn't got any ads made. What? Thierry Henry will be appearing on Sky Sports upcoming as a pundit. This man dipped as soon as he saw Kate Abdo had a man. I'll be honest, Thierry was pretty upset logging onto Insta and seeing this story. <laughs> The poor guy's found out he's just a work husband and not a legal husband. Because unlike that night in Ireland, there's no hand on his ball. He'll be struggling to hold in the emotions when he's invited to the wedding and will still be salty when his actual wife and kids come to pick him up from the CBS studio. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Sit down! Get in the back seat! Get back there, come on, man. Eric Ten Hag was left fuming at Fulham's TikTok account after they posted a video mocking Bruno Fernandes for going down too easily. Fulham's admin was taking no prisoners when he arrived outside to complain. I didn't call you baldy baldy. This man wanted Mason Greenwood back at the club, but fucking hell, if the clubs start making TikToks, eh, Eric? At Chelsea v Brentford and the Blues drop yet more points in a 2-2 draw here. Neil Mopé was prepping his next bit of shit housery, scrapping a fridge this morning in preparation for Cole Palmer's cold celebration. And this game is where you find our first goal of the week as Johan Wisser scored a sensational bicycle kick. This guy tried it three times in this game, by the way. The guy was achievement hunting. He had a bet with Ivan Tony, 75 to 1 at William Hill. Now, in the women's side of the game and at Chelsea, Sam Kerr is being investigated after alleged racially motivated language against the police officer. It's a Chelsea thing. I women's football's downloaded the controversy DLC. They're cooking. John Terry will be delighted seeing traditions kept alive, only to realize that it was actually directed at a white police officer. Blues fans are gutted realizing that this isn't actually anti-black racism and I'm f sick of it. I heard John Terry will be calling her Nick Kerr when she arrives back at Stamford Bridge. I mentioned Ivan Tony. He was at the Brits presenting, but he wasn't let off too lightly by his co-host when introducing the award. For producer of the year, Ivan, any bets on who it could be? Damn, too soon, too, too soon, soon, too soon. Back in the Ivory Coast, and one fan had created their very own Simon Adingra shirt, made out of stuff that could be found around after his impressive performance at the African Cup of Nations. Well, this reached the Brighton winger, and he decided to specially send out an actual Adingra shirt. Some very wholesome stuff going on there. Luis Diaz's dad has become a TikTok sensation and could be seen dancing with some of his family members to a song that references kidnapping. This guy's out of control. Over on Twitter, and Fabio Vieira struck a language barrier, saying that he's gutted to be 
back in training. Steady with the language. I know English isn't your first, but... Yeah, look, listen, I'd be gutted as well if I was firing through balls to Gabriel Jesus. Tottenham goalkeeper Vicario has really made an impact at Spurs and really become a fan favourite already. He's doing even more to improve that image, heading down to a National League game involving Barnett to gas up and support the club's youth goalkeeper, or Tottenham's keeper, who's out on loan at the North London side. Meanwhile, there was controversy at QPR versus West Brom down in the Championship as a disgraceful Luis Suarez-esque handball on the goal line to deny a goal was not seen by officials. No VAR down there, of course, and fans in the area were making their feelings known in a disgraceful manner. Now, at PSG, and Luis Enrique has been acting interestingly, regularly subbing off Kylian Mbappe early in games. This is to allegedly get used to life without the Frenchman after he moves to Real Madrid in the summer. The guy was in trackies mid-game for Monaco. Brothers had a cup of hot chocolate and a warm bath by the second 45. Meanwhile, mid-match, he was going over and getting pictures with Monaco. Mid-game meet and greets. This league is so unserious, and it gets more unserious as the league's naming rights are changing from the Ligue 1 Uber Eat to now Ligue 1 McDonald's. After the fast food chain made a bigger and better offer for the naming rights. This is worse, bro. What's the trophy gonna look like at the end of the season? Kylian Mbappe will not be impressed when PSG offer him a 20 McNuggets share box to stay. And if he did stay, he'd look very, very different by the end of next season. I'll tell you that for free. Meanwhile, Ousmane Dembele is finally where he belongs working at McDonald's. Just below them in league are, and Brest are in second place. What a season it has been for them. Incredible journey so far. But for me, Brest will always be first in my eyes. And at Lons, their fans, well, they took an interesting tour this week. Going to a random 10th tier game on the way to their match, supporting their team. They decided to just stop off and support a Sunday league club, basically. Only for the team that they decided to support to lose. But hey, look, listen, at least they tried. Over in Spain and Barcelona are suffering an injury crisis as Pedri and Frank Frankie de Jong went off injured in their most recent game v Bilbao. Honestly, them trying to keep Pedri, Gavi and de Jong fit at the same time is a mission. Hey, that little boy is playing three games at once. Check me. Check me. Check me. Dang. Frankie de Jong here, he got driven off the pitch injured. Yes, Kalas. Meanwhile, for Pedri and his injury record is looking repetitive. His hamstring is a concept. He has a hamstring in his imagination and that's about it. Ronald Koeman needs to be put into jail for the child labour he inflicted on this man. We might be about to lose a generation talent because he played 70 games in a year when he was 18. Now I brought you the story of Barcelona changing their kit supplier from Nike but it turns out they may be creating an entirely new shirt brand. They barely have the funds to put a club together let alone a new company. They're gonna have La Masia graduates working in sweatshops by next Tuesday. Pedri's gonna look even more tired doing an eight-hour shirt shift after a league match versus Rayo Vallecano. And for the new camp and Barca have announced they'll be naming the new gates at the stadium after club legends. Ah oh, I can't wait for the Martin Braith gate. Someone said that one to eight will be Bayern Munich goal scorers. Man, you didn't have to do that. Shout out to Iñaki Williams and Nico Williams who combined for a goal in the Copa del Rey semi-finals to beat Atletico Madrid 3-0. They're living a dream by the way as siblings, just like working together to score massive goals. And they're doing up massive projects as well, building a school back in their home nation, Ghana. Joining them in the Copa del Rey final will be Mallorca. Unbelievable journey for them to reach the final too. Would be a massive upset for them to win, but they're just gassed even to get to the final. Meanwhile, one Spanish fan caught Sergio Ramos driving, and it was one of the most wholesome Sergio Ramos moments ever. In Italy, there was absolute carnage between Lazio and Milan. Milan running out 1-0 victors here, but that did not tell the story, as Lazio had three players sent off. Turns out their fans aren't the only ones in favour of violence. In fairness, though, these red cards were a little bit of a joke. The referee being far too trigger-happy. If a Lazio player breathed in the wrong direction, he was out of there. A shambolic display from him, but made all okay because he did this no-look double card at the same time. That is all Rafam. Bobby Dazzler, Bobby Firmino. In to announce they'd be sponsored by Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles this week and played in that shirt, as you can see here. Marcus Turam decided to tag Kylian Mbappe on Insta as the shirt sponsor. A light shithousery award, bronze standard. Meanwhile, at Bologna, they're enjoying a sensational season and their winger, Ricardo Orsalini, was getting blocked by fans. So he decided to roll down the sunroof and get involved with them. <laughs> Slightly different fan engagement going on in the Bundesliga though. Darmstadt have just lost 6-0 to Augsburg and they sit bottom of the league. That led to the leader of the SVDs motivating, shall we say, the squad at full time. You do seriously surprise me. You surprise me to how shit you are. Meanwhile at Union Berlin and a 16-year-old stole Kevin Volland's watch. That was worth around 180,000 euros. His teammate though, Jerome Rousselon, was not having any of it. And the Frenchman chased down the kid and managed to win the watch back to 
deliver to his teammate Kevin. Unbelievable stuff. That's the new Batman fam. Now there is time for your other two goals of the week and we've got some interesting strikes here. First of all, we head over to Poland where Kamil Zapolnik has scored a ridiculous goal for Puszcza. And the final goal of the week is the most unique that we've ever seen because it's scored by a manager. Take a bow, boss of Doncaster Rovers, who in training has seen the ball smack off the crossbar, land right in front of him and on the full volley, caught it with a scissor kick into the top corner. Get him back on the pitch, son. Hello all and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. Allá la busca la roca, le va a pegar. No, dice que no. La hace personal, la hace individual. Aquí está con la número 5. ¿Qué va a hacer? La lleva el jugador de la roca. And that concludes the beautiful game. Over in America, and let's take a look at Lionel Messi. Watch as Inter Miami are continuing to do well. So much so that Lionel can score with his chest these days. Unserious league, I can't even lie. What is this defending? At least do it properly like Vout Faze did. Imagine being a manager seeing a centre back twat it off his own crossbar. Elsewhere for Leo, and with a wayward free kick, he actually struck a baby behind a goal. I mean, that's like being baptised in a football sense, right? Speaking of which, one kid in a youth academy in Brazil has been named Lionel Messi. De Silva. Staying on the American vibe and Hugo Lloris is learning that the weather conditions out there are a little bit more extreme. And speaking of extreme, New England Revolution have got a new tradition. Throwing a box with the badge of their opponents down onto the pitch. Americans deserve everything that happens to them, you know. I can't lie, the Box V6 series not looking that great right now. In the Netherlands, and Jordan Henderson was showing that true passion that he was showing at Liverpool. I've got the ick, I'll be 100% honest with you. Gareth Southgate is gonna be delighted seeing him concede a throw in here. In Turkey, and Mario Balotelli is his usual self, setting off a firework in the dressing room. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the plains of the Sahara, and these lot playing a football match might want to <clears throat> look over their shoulder, because I'm not going to lie, I would need to get out of there. But do you want an escape from how terrible life is right now? Well, why don't we take a look back down memory lane with FTW Rewind, taking a look at what was happening this week many, many years ago. Ah, what a lovely nostalgic intro. We start our journey taking a look at this week in the past, with things being bad for Manchester United. So just like the present day, as this week, a year ago, they were being slapped by Liverpool. And just like the amount of hair follicles on Eric Ten Hag's head, they held seven. It was a classic Champions League tie back in 2005 between Chelsea and Barcelona, and it saw something absolutely criminal from Ronaldinho. And I don't mean his passport. And finally, all the way back in 1961, Halifax Town had just seen their league game postponed because of a frozen pitch. So they decided to double down and open up the stadium for fans and kids alike, making it a dedicated ice rink. If only FTW had been about back then, this would have been a classic story. Why, hello and welcome. Now, there were crazy scenes in Scotland in the Edinburgh derby between Hearts and Hibs. Very fierce rivalry. They kind of all are in Scotland. And as Hearts would take a 2-0 victory, Shankland, who'd scored for them, grabs a pie that's thrown from the stand, eats it and throws it back. It is an unbelievable image and I can't lie, that's what Scottish football should be all about. However, at the same time, a different fan throws a slightly different object a knife. Hide your wife. I've got a knife. First of all, how the fuck do you even get this into the ground? Second of all, very, very close to actually striking him. This could have gone very, very wrong indeed. The pie is funny, but this is taking it too far. In Brazil, and I challenge you to find a better own goal than this. That's a screamer, mate. That could be in goals of the week again. Now, if you thought that was suspicious, there's some genuine match fixing going on at Jure Gardens in Sweden. <laughs> My brother in Christ, what are you even doing? Why are you even that far out of your goal? There was none of that drama though over in South America as this fan took the time to have a nap live on TV. And in more catastrophic circumstances down on the pitch, this Trabzonspor defender clearly didn't see the goalkeeper playing the ball from a goal kick. Meanwhile, back in Brazil, and it's fair to say time wasting has gone a little bit too far as one defender goes down, is dragged back onto the pitch by his teammates to waste time, only to then be dragged back off by opponents and then back on. This guy is literally a hot potato. Now that it's time 
for the moment you've all been waiting for because over in Romania, things have been quiet in our favorite nation. I do apologize, lads. It's been ages since we saw Romania this week, but it's back and it's back with a familiar face. I've told you the story of a man called Nicola Napoli before in this series. A man who has managed Universitatea Craiova a ridiculous amount of times. Well, just when you thought he was done with this team, he's back again. This man has now taken charge of this Romanian side for a tenth time in his career. Seemingly, every single time they bring him in, he either does a bad job or is like just a caretaker short term, gets replaced by someone who then gets sacked, and then they just bring him back again. Now, closer to home, and Wimbledon faced off against their bitter rivals, MK Dons. If you don't know the story, the original Wimbledon FC from the Premier League were moved controversially by a businessman to Milton Keynes, became a new team, and then fans of the original Wimbledon created a new AFC Wimbledon. And Wimbledon this week won in the 94th minute against their Milton Keynes enemies. <laughs> There was more drama elsewhere in the Football League as Watford scored an outrageous own goal to continue their poor home form and that poor form was being documented by Coventry staff as one scout could be seen in the crowd sending over notes to the club's manager saying that basically they were useless and picking out poor defenders to go up against. Meanwhile at Wickham Wanderers and things were even worse for David Wheeler who was subbed on and then immediately sent off just a minute later. Now over in Mexico and at Tigres, two packs are live. Then he's Mexican back in the MLS and the own goals keep coming over at Nashville. I'm sorry, this has to be on purpose. I, I don't even know what the man was trying to do here. That's a quality finish. We've seen two terrible own goals today. You might as well see another one as San Marcos in Chile managed to completely defy the laws of physics to score an own goal here. The ball's come down with snow on it and still gone in. You couldn't do this again if you tried a million times. In North America and babies are encouraged to drink beer in the stands. You know, Messi's ready to knock that pie out of his hand immediately. After contra Controversial decisions in a Qatar Pro League game, a chairman of one of the teams had had enough and withdrew his side, forfeiting the match, citing poor refereeing decisions. In Japan here, and we've got a ridiculous no-look finish one-on-one. -on -one. The balls to do this, incredible. Meanwhile, in Ecuador, and how about this for control and improvisation over a defender's head? That might be the best bit of footballing ability we've seen today. Now there is time for still nil-nil and you guys know the score by now. This is a segment of the show where I bring to the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And this week, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a friend of the channel. Now let's paint a picture. How do you usually get to a Sunday League match? You slap all your kit in a massive bag, dirty shin pads that you forgot to wash, and you sit in the back of a car, most likely hung over from the Saturday night before. Or alternatively, you could fly there. Yep, that's right, this interesting individual of a man by the name of Charlie Roxborg decided to fly to his local Sunday League match, only to realise that he was on the bench. Brought down to earth in more ways than one. You can check out the full video though down in the description below. I urge you to go check it out, it's a sick one. On to the weird stuff though now. Over in Argentina and Rosario Central are undergoing massive stadium renovations and they found a interesting relic whilst doing so. Well, as they knocked through walls, they found a passageway that hadn't been used in the stadium since the 70s and they even found a ridiculously old football in there. This had been literally in there for near enough about 50 years now, and who knows the last footballer that he actually saw. In France, a Marseille fan has been scammed out of 15,000 euros after being tricked into believing that he was talking to the club's president. The fan was apparently promised that if he sent 15,000 euros on Facebook to a man pretending to be Pablo Longoria here, Pablo would then send him 80,000 euros in return for the help. Why would a club president need 15,000 euros? Second of all, how can you believe he was going to give you 80,000 euros in response. And finally, at the Women's CONCACAF Gold Cup, there was a one in a million occurrence. Puerto Rico and Costa Rica were both on the verge of qualifying from the group stages. However, when officials from the tournament tried to work out who would get through in terms of a best third place finisher, they realized that Puerto Rico and Costa Rica had the exact same record. And I mean the exact same. Points, goals scored, goals against, even their disciplinary record was exactly the same, leaving the officials no choice but to conduct a coin toss to decide who would make it through. In the end, Costa Rica won and poor Puerto Rico were dealt the most unlucky ending to a tournament of all time. That though is going to wrap up football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, feel free to slap a like on the video and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.